for today's video, we will answer a geometry challenge given by one of our followers. And the question goes like this. Given this right triangle, from vertex A, B, and C, let's draw a segment inside of our right triangle and let's call this point B equal to P. Now, this angle must be equal to 15 degrees. This is given. And this angle also equals to 15 degrees. And this angle is X degrees. It is also given that AB equals BC. Then the question is, what is the value of this angle X? Now, you can pause this video if you want to give this problem a try. And now, let's answer this question together. Alright, so given this figure, our goal is to find the value of this angle, x. So to answer this question, I will show you two methods. The first one is using geometry with a little bit of trigonometry. And the second one is using law of sine. And also, I will compute this using calculator tricks. Alright, so let's start with the first method which is the geometry approach all right now to answer this using geometry of course we need to utilize the given that side ab must be equal to side bc so ab must be equal to bc it tells us that this triangle abc is an isosceles right triangle it follows that angle a must be equal to 45 degrees and this angle c must be also 45 degrees now since we know this information, so we can now peel out the unknown angle. So this is 15 degrees, so we know this is 90 degrees, so the other angle must be equal to 75 degrees, of course. Now we can say also, a while ago, that this angle is 45 degrees, so we have 15 degrees, so the remaining angle must be 30 degrees. This angle right over here, A, is also 45 degrees. We have now angle X right here, so the remaining angle must be equal to 45 degrees minus angle X. Now, don't forget that triangle ABC is an isosceles right triangle. So, we can make a square out of it if we do like this. And let's call this vertex B equal to D. Now, we can say that ABCD must be a square because all of this side must be equal. Now, what we're going to do here is to create a perpendicular line that divides the side AD. Now, using this, we can say that this point P must be somewhere in this perpendicular line because we have two congruent angles right over here. So, this point P must be in this perpendicular line. Now, without the loss of generality, let's have the length of the side of the square and this must be equal to 2. Why not? So, half of it must be equal to 1. So, this is 1. This is also 1. This is 1 and this also 1. Now, let's focus on this right triangle right over here. We know we have 15 degrees the adjacent side is 1 and we don't have the opposite side of this right triangle. And to find the length of the opposite side, we will use the tangent function. So using this right triangle, we can say that tangent 15 degrees must be equal to opposite side over adjacent side. That is the definition of the tangent function. We know the length of the adjacent side which is equal to 1. Simplifying this, so we can say that the opposite side of this right triangle must be equal to tangent of 15 degrees. So this segment right over here must be equal to tangent 15 degrees. Now the question is what is the numerical value of tangent 15 degrees? Here's the solution for tangent 15 degrees. So you can use tangent law or the law of tangent because tangent 15 degrees must be equal to tangent of 45 minus 30 degrees. So using the law of tangent, simplifying this, we get that tangent 15 degrees must be equal to 2 minus square root of 3. So this segment right over here must be equal to 2 minus square root of 3. And also take note that the length of the side of the square must be equal to 2. This segment, small segment, is 2 minus square root of 3. So we can say that from this point P, 
up to this point must be equal to square root of 3 units. Because the whole thing is 2 minus square root of 3, so this small segment must be equal to 2 minus square root of 3. Now, from here, let's focus on this right triangle. So we have the base of 1 and the other leg must be equal to square root of 3. Now, this is very familiar. So, using Pythagorean theorem, we can say that the hypotenuse must be equal to 2 units. So, let's prove this. So, we can say that 1 squared plus square root of 3 raised to the power of 2 equals 2 squared. So, 1 squared is 1. Square root of 3, quantity squared, this is just 3. And 2 squared is 4. And definitely, 1 plus 3 is 4, so 4 must be equal to 4. Therefore, we can say that the hypotenuse of this right triangle must be equal to 2 units, like this. And since it is a special right triangle, this right triangle right over here must be also equivalent to 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And since this angle right over here, we know this is 60 degrees, and the whole thing is 90 degrees, so we can say that 45 minus x degrees must be equal to 30 degrees. So now we can say that 45 minus x equals 30 degrees. Now solving for the value of x, rearrange some terms a little bit. So x must be equal to 45 minus 30 degrees. And 45 minus 30 must be equal to 15 degrees. And that is the value of this angle, x. So using geometry, we can say that the value of the variable x must be equal to 15 degrees. All right. Now, how about the second method using law of sine and a little bit of calculator technique? All right. Now, to use the law of sine in this question, we need to consider also that BP, side BP, must be equal to side PC. All right. And now, let's call this as T. So the other one is also T. So BP is T and PC equals to T because they are congruent. And let's call this segment AP be equal to S. Now, what is law of sine? So law of sine, given this figure, we can say that sine of angle A over A must be equal to sine of angle B over side B equals sine of angle C over side C or a over sine of angle A equals B over sine of angle B equals C over sine of angle C. So using this concept, we can now answer this question. Now let's consider this triangle and let's use the law of sine. So using this triangle, we can say that S over sine of 75 degrees must be equal to T over sine of 45 minus x degrees. Alright. Now, rearrange some terms a little bit. So we can say that s divided by t must be equal to sine of 75 degrees over sine of 45 degrees minus x. And now, let's use the second triangle. Again, using the law of sine, we can say that s over sine of 30 degrees must be equal to t over sine of x degrees. Again, using this equation, rearrange some terms a little bit, and we can see that s over t must be equal to sine of 30 degrees over sine of x. And now, we see two similar terms. We have s divided by t and s divided by t on this equation. So since they are equal, so we can say that sine of 30 degrees over sine of x must be equal to sine 75 degrees over sine of 45 degrees minus x. And on using this equation, we can now find the value of x. So let's focus on this equation. Now to answer this, we can use the sum and difference identities involving sine. Because this 75 degrees, we can rewrite this as 45 degrees plus 30 degrees. And we use this identity. Also, we can easily find the values of sine 30 and sine 45 and cosine 30 and cosine 45. These are the values that we need to evaluate this equation and to solve for the value of x. But 
why not? Let's use calculator to answer this question. And also, on the following video, I will upload a video that contains different calculator techniques. And these techniques will help you in your study. So now, let's have our calculator. Alright, now this is very important. We have solve equal. So we will use ship solve in this question. Now, to start with, let's have this fraction and let's put sine 30. And make sure, before we start this, the mode of our calculator is in degrees. Alright, so we have sine of 30 degrees over sine of x. So we have alpha x, close parenthesis. We have equal sine, so we have alpha equals, then fraction again sine 75 degrees close parenthesis divided by sine of 45 minus alpha x then close parenthesis now to solve for the value of x let's do ship and then solve so solve for x equals and here we go x must be equal to 15 degrees and that is the answer to this question so definitely x must be equal to 15 degrees and that is the answer to this question so given this figure we can say that the value of this angle x must be equal to 15 degrees and as always we are done